to a melanin-dominant individual. And I don't mean greens cooked for hours with meat, because that is trash, and you might as well throw that out. So green vegetables that are lightly steamed or eaten raw is what I'm talking about, because they still have to be green for them to have the effect on cleaning the melanin. They can't be dark brown or olive green, because you've destroyed that. Okay? Thank you. I have asthma, and they just recently put me on a medication called asthma court, mm -hmm. and there are times that I do take the medicine that it does not help. So what can I do health-wise that I won't have to take the asthma court or the primatine mist to clear my asthma up? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, asthma is interesting, and uh, as above, so below. You know we have five bodies. Most of us have four, hoping to build a next one known as the fifth body. So we have a soul body, we have a mental body, an emotional body, and a physical body. The um, spiritual body is something that each and every one of us is asked to create for ourselves this lifetime. And so how creation works in this dimension is that anything on the physical level originates from the invisible. And so that is to say that every disease has a mental, spiritual, or should I say a mental and emotional origin as well as a physical origin. From the physical level, I have found that many people have inflicted asthma or lung problems on themselves that are melanin dominant because they eat dairy products. We cannot eat dairy products after the age of five years old. And the only dairy products that Africans can metabolize properly has to come from a human, not from a cow, not from a goat, not from any other animal except a human. So if you do not have access to yogurt made from human milk, milk made from human milk, cheese made from human milk, then as a melanin dominant individual, that is not what you're supposed to eat. It has taken millions of years for the Caucasians to inculcate in their genetic memory the capacity to use a lower animal's excrements. You have to understand that milk is an excrement. Butter is an excrement from an animal. And to be able to metabolize that and work it down has taken millions of years of them eating that to be able to utilize it properly. So therefore, they had no choice because of the amount of protein and fat that they needed to stay warm in a cold climate to use the excrement of lower animals to sustain themselves. And so therefore, after eating that for millions of years, they are able to break it down. We cannot break that down after the age of five years old. And so giving our children milk and dairy products, giving ourselves that, it actually clogs up the intestines. When the intestines get clogged up, then it actually then builds up into the lungs. So as above, so below. So you want to have healthy lungs, you've got to have a healthy digestive tract. Constipation is one of the main reasons why so many people have lung disease. Secondly, also eating mucusy foods and not getting the mucus off the walls of your colon. Thirdly, inappropriate exercise. That is, what do you do to really stress your lungs? If you want to maintain something, you have to use it. Most people, when they start having problems with a part of their body, the first thing they do is want to cut it off and not use it. If you do not use it, you will lose it. So that means that if you want to get over this impairment in your lungs, then you must walk. You must exercise. And you don't do it until you fall out, but you do it until it becomes uncomfortable for you. And then you do it the next day. And you do it the next day. And what will happen is that you will find that it no longer becomes uncomfortable, and then you can do more. And then more will become uncomfortable. And then you keep doing that until it no longer becomes uncomfortable. And then pretty soon you'll find that regular exercise no longer is a problem. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Many of us have parasites that because of eating animal flesh that we have worms in our colon and they can stay there for up to 35 years. And so when those worms lay their eggs twice a month at the new moon and the full moon, you will go into an asthma attack. And so therefore, you have to then make sure that you do not have worms and you have to take a dewormer. So many times I've seen patients in full-blown asthma only because it's at the new moon when the eggs are circulating in their bloodstream. So therefore, they go to the doctor and get full of cortisone shots and epinephrine and a whole bunch of other stuff when they need to be dewormed. So when you deworm them and they load the toilet up full of the worms, they don't have asthma anymore. Thank you so much.
All right. I work in the drug and alcohol field, and I'd like to know what could be done to detoxify melanin and revitalize it. Okay. One of the most important uh, substances for melanin is light. And so I think it's very important for any of these uh, institutions to check what kind of lighting they're exposing the, the uh, clients to. Okay, if you do not have incandescent bulbs, then you should buy what's called the chroma lights, which are actually full spectrum lights. That's very, very important. To have them under fluorescent lights is very, very dangerous. They've actually proven that melanin dominant individuals that are exposed to certain frequencies of fluorescent light will actually begin to exhibit bizarre, bizarre hyperactive behavior. And so in our schools, many of, much of the lighting is inadequate. And for the children especially, it causes them to be hyperactive. The child is not a slow learner or has an attention deficit. It just needs to get that light bulb off of his skin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Secondly, sugar, white sugar that does not have the B vitamins on it. And again, eating processed foods that have a lot of chemicals on it, MSG, BTH, canned foods, etc., are no-no for an individual that's trying to break toxins off the melanin molecule. And thirdly, there are herbal formulas that can be administered to also help break that off. But right now, most Africans who have been addicted to drugs are really drug-free only by their sheer will because they still are heavily laden with drugs in their body. I don't care if they haven't used for five or six years. They, that drug is like a part of them, and it's a, just a conscious effort for them every day to just fight that feeling. And that is not what I call a rehab program. What about, what about the herbal formula? Well, now, there's uh, only two herbal formulas that I know of. There's Pro Melanin 2000, and then there's the Sun Life Foods. The Pro Melanin 2000, I think, can get, be obtained, but I don't have the resource right now. The Sun Life Foods will be available in September, and so we're looking forward to that. What's in there? Uh, whew, it's a long litany of herbs, okay? But the main thing is, is that the herbs themselves contain pre-melanin, or should I say, contain uh, precursors for melanin, okay? And that's the main thing. So it's a huge molecule, so you have to, like, study it and kind of put it together, okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. discussion yesterday and the question came up, actually I posed the question, I know you prescribe a uh, macrobiotic diet mm -hmm. and the question that came around in my mind was, well what about the Ayurvedic diet, mm -hmm. being that uh, Indians or people from India tend to be closer to us genetically mm -hmm. than Japanese. Mm -hmm. So Okay, thank you. Uh, the macrobiotic diet is a diet that varies based on where you live on the planet. Macro meaning large and biotic meaning study of life. So I do not prescribe a macrobiotic diet based on the Japanese. I prescribe a macrobiotic diet based upon where your location is in time and space. Me living in Detroit, Michigan versus somebody living in Florida, there are different foods that are available to us and the foods have